What's up you guys, Rex here. This past week in medical school, I learned a ton about the influenza virus and finally got some answers to why we have like regular flu seasons every year in addition to really unfortunate global pandemics related to flu that pop up every so often. And I wanted to share that with you today. So first, some real basics on the influenza virus. It is an RNA virus of the orthomyxo family that comes in type A, B, C, and D. But today we're really gonna talk about type A. When you think about the flu, that's the one to think about. And that's also noteworthy is that's the one that can infect both humans and animals. And we'll talk about why that's significant in just a bit. We also have to talk about two proteins that are on the outside of the influenza virus that help make it be so virulent and actually cause disease. The first is neuroaminidase and we abbreviate this NA, so I'll just say NA. So this is something that functions as an enzyme that cleaves sialic acid, and the important thing to know is NA helps the virus get through our mucus and actually reach our epithelium and infect us. It's also noteworthy that NA is a target for some flu therapies and drugs, such as Tamiflu, which you might've heard of. The next one to talk about is hemagglutinin, or HA. This is significant for binding to receptors on our epithelial cells that helps the virus actually get into our cells. Now there are about 18 different types of NA and 11 different types of HA. And so together, each virus can only have one type of NA and one type of HA. So if you do the math 18 times 11, there are 198 theoretical possibilities for NA and HA combined together on one virus. However, we only have currently discovered about 131 of these actually out in nature that exist. And it's this HA plus NA that gives the name to viruses. So I finally know why H1N1 is called H1N1. So that is because there is the type one of HA and type one of NA, H1N1. So that is what caused swine flu back in 2019 and also caused the global flu pandemic of 1918. So these 131 possible strains that we have so far discovered of HA and NA start to explain why coming up with a flu vaccine is so difficult. Typically, we only choose like three or four strains and we do like a best guess of what are gonna be the most common strains. But even if it's not that specific strain we put into a vaccine, it still provides protection against other strains from getting your most severe disease. So it's very important to get your flu vaccine even if you realize that the purpose of the flu vaccine is not to prevent you from getting the flu, it is to prevent you from getting really severe complications and potentially dying from the flu. That's the point of the flu vaccine. Now, in addition to this huge 131 possible strains, there's also something called antigenic drift that happens. And this is where there's small changes that just happen over time because viruses deliberately have sort of an unstable genome. So there's always mutations happening, causing small changes in things that our immune system uses to identify and get rid of this virus. So as this drifts, there are slightly different strains that are always popping up and make it even more difficult for a vaccine to be made. And that's why we can get the influenza virus multiple times in our life, because there'll be slightly different strains. In addition to antigenic drift, something called antigenic shift can happen. And so this is where the virus from two different species come together and sort of really start swapping genetic information and totally come up with something new. And so this is typically where it's a human virus and a bird virus get together inside of a pig and they infect the same cell, swap genetic information and totally shift their antigenic profile that is totally new in something that our body cannot recognize because it's completely novel. And that's where an actual pandemic happens is when you have two different strains from different species that come together in another species or one of those two to start with and then hops over to humans and it's not recognized and that's where you have very unfortunate public health outcomes. And these periodic events of antigenic shift is what has caused flu pandemics and unfortunately will probably cause more flu pandemics in the future. But as we are getting better and better at making vaccines more and more quickly, hopefully these will be less and less significant and have less impact on human lives. So. That's what we'll leave you with today. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. If you want to catch more of my videos where I share what I learned in medical school, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.